Good evening, my friends. This is Eugene Clapp of EE Clapp Iron Mind Motivational Coaching. And tonight I want to ask you a question. I want to talk about um, are you playing checkers or are you playing chess with your life? Now, I remember back before we had all these cell phones and when I had hair, I would go to the barber shop, and the barber shop in my neighborhood was a mecca for men. I mean, it's where we went to learn things, where we went to hear things, where we went to have a good time. And I can remember going in the barber shops, and it was always older men in there, and they were always talking about sports, and sometimes they were joking with each other and talking about life events. But barber shops also had checkerboards, and chess boards in them. Now, the thing about it is a lot of the men who were more of the ones who were frivolous and like to joke a lot, they gravitated toward the checkers. But a lot of the deep men in there who talked about philosophical things, who talked about events, who actually tried to pass on pearls of wisdom, I noticed they would gravitate toward the chess board. And I found myself gravitating more toward the chessboard because the chessboard was more challenging. See, in checkers, it's a reactive game. I mean, you look to see what your opponent is going to do, and then you make your move. So you react. In chess, it's a little different. In chess, the object of the game is to control the board and set your opponent up to capture his pieces. So it takes a lot more strategy. It takes a lot more thinking. It takes thinking five, six, seven, eight moves ahead in order to win the game. And sometimes before you move a piece, you can sit there for hours just to make sure that you're putting the right move and the right strategy in place. And in life, I find that a lot of us are playing checkers, we ain't playing chess. We're reacting to what goes on and we're not being proactive in planning out our next move and our strategies to make sure we live the life that we're trying to live and reach the goal that we're trying to reach. So there's a lot of parallels there with checkers and chess and life. Now in chess, all the pieces on the board they have a purpose. But sometimes you got to be willing to do what? To go ahead and to achieve your goal, to go ahead and strategize on the board. You got to let the pawns go. In life, a lot of times we have a life full of pawns. And in order for us to get to the next level, we have to be willing to do what? We have to be doing, willing to let these pawns go. And sometimes these pawns are old habits that we have. Sometimes these pawns are ways of thinking that we have. Sometimes these pawns are people that we have in our life. And one thing we cannot be afraid to do is let the pawns die, which means they have to be removed from our life in order for us to go ahead and advance and reach our goals and move to the next level. So that's the whole thing about chess. Now, one thing too about chess, it takes a long time to learn how to become a master of this game. Experts says it takes between 9 and 11 years for somebody to become a grandmaster at chess. Now, why am I saying this to you? See, we live in a fast food society now, people. And people want instant gratification and instant success. And most of the time, it don't work that way. You don't get instant gratification. You don't get instant success. Anything that you participate in, anything that you start, you're going to have to work at it. So you just think about this. If it takes a person... 9 to 11 years of diligent practice day in, day out for hours at a time to become a grandmaster at the game of chess 
You think about you. You think about me. You think about the people that you know who have achieved greatness in athletics, who have achieved greatness in business, who have achieved greatness in their professions. You think about the time that it took for them to get there. Now, I know a lot of times we see the finished product and we don't think about all the blood, sweat, and tears that these people had to go through. We don't think about the way they set up their chessboard and the way they move the pieces around to ensure that they set it up right to go ahead and make their outcome favorable for them and reach their goals. I think Ray Kroc said it better than anyone. Ray Kroc said, yes. He said, I was an overnight success with McDonald's, but 25 years is a long, long night. So when he was deemed a success with the McDonald's Corporation, he had already been toiling for 25 years with McDonald's before somebody called him a success. But when we saw the final product, it looked like it happened overnight. But it didn't. So in your life, in my life, whatever we want, we got to be willing to go ahead and toil. We got to be willing to go ahead and set that chessboard up and practice and move the pieces around in a position that's favorable for us. So don't play checkers. Play chess. Now, there are some things that you have to remember about playing chess. And what I did, I wrote them down because I didn't want to miss anything and I want to expound on the topics a little more. So, number one, you have to realize this. You got to realize the goals are being aware of each piece and what the role is. So in your life, anybody that comes in your life, any time you have a situation, anything that you partake in, endeavor-wise, it has a goal. You have to understand how the pieces fit in place for your life to get you to your ultimate goal. Number two, goals are understanding that you cannot make a move without the help of another. Now, here's something that we don't think about. You look at a chessboard, how a person moves and where they go is going to help you out or is going to hinder you in life. You're going to have gatekeepers and you're going to have people who want to keep you out. I have a saying that you have to identify your grave diggers from your pallbearers. And I use that with a person that I worked with one time and he never forgot it. And years later he told me, you know, I figured out what you're talking about from your grave diggers and the difference between them and your pallbearers. And this is what we have to figure out with, with you know, what we're doing a chessboard. We got to make sure that we realize that in order for us to get to the next level, we're going to need help from others. No man is an island. We try to do it by ourselves and what happens? It doesn't work out as planned most of the time. Number three, it takes a significant amount of focus to know when to attack and when to defend. Now, a lot of times people want to jump to conclusions. A lot of times people want to bristle up at everything. Kenny Rogers said it best in the song, The Gambler. Remember what he said? He said, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. And that's the thing about chess. You got to know what pieces you can sacrifice. You got to know what pieces to protect to help you win the game. Same thing in life. You got to know what to do. You got to know when to attack and when to defend to win the chess game of life. Number four, it may take thousands of hours to master your goal. And guess what? Even after those thousands of hours, you, you might come up against somebody who's just better than you at that time. Because if you keep on working at it, you're going to get better and better and better and better. Remember, the only difference between the beginner and the master is that the master has failed many, many more times than the beginner has even thought about attempting. They fail their way to success, and you hear me talk about that a lot. You have to fail your way to success. Number five, it ain't supposed to be easy, at least not at first. You know, you're going to continually come up against scenarios and challenges trying to stop you from winning. 
It ain't never easy. You know, it's a saying that your breakthrough is right before your breaking point. And people many times, <laughs> all of us have this feeling who are trying to achieve something, that we're at our wits end, we're at our breaking point, and we just can't take no more. But we have to realize that these challenges are going to be there. They're roadblocks in our way. It's how we deal with them. It's how we're able to get through them. It's how we're able to endure the blood, the sweat, the tears, and the pain in order to reach the desired goal that we're trying to reach with our lives. The next one, it's going to get difficult to quiet your mind when you go through this because when that happens and you're wondering about certain things and you're worried about certain things, the smallest of actions um, is hard to do. And you have to know that the smallest of actions is part of the parts that make up the whole of your successful being. And last but not least with this one, when you do become the master, when you do become the best in the business at what you're doing, hey, what you're doing becomes what? It becomes fun. I mean, it's still challenging, but it's fun. And in the end, it's worth it. Now, these things right here are very easy to live by. Very easy. So my thing to you is, are you going to continue to play checkers with your life? Or are you going to go ahead and step your game and boss up and move on to playing chess with your life? And understand this, if you choose to play chess, uh, no, success is not going to be a straight shot for you. It's going to have a lot of twists and a lot of turns. And you have to realize that doing the right thing entitles you to nothing. There are plenty of people out there who are doing the right thing, plenty of people out there who have done the right thing, and everything is still in disarray. Now, I can tell you how that feels. I've been there. Sometimes I'm still there. Okay? Now, if you're doing the right thing, if you're doing it like the blueprint says, and you ain't getting no results, well, sometimes you got to step outside the box, take a chance, and you got to throw away the book so they can't read you like one. And that means when you take a chance and you throw away this playbook, you got to do something outside the box and you got to do something drastic. I'm going to give you a case in point. It happened, what, about a year or two ago? You had a dude that moved out there to Silicon Valley and he wasn't getting a job. I mean, he, he couldn't find a job anywhere. So what this dude did, this dude printed out resumes and stood on the street corner and for the cars that passed by, he handed his resume to anybody that would grab it. Well, what happened? That was so outside the box until I guess people started talking about it. And the news media got wind of this and spotlighted this guy in what he was doing. Now, this is a man who had tried the traditional, conventional approaches. And he wasn't getting anywhere. But he did something drastic. He thought outside the box. He threw the playbook away and decided to do it this way. And guess what? His phone got inundated with hundreds of calls offering him a job. Had he not stepped outside the box and done that, he'd have been in the same position not having a job as many other job seekers were because they were trying to do it the right way. People, I can tell you, I've had times in my life when I've tried to do things the right way. Most of my life, I've tried to do things the right way. I try to dot all I's and cross all T's. Many times it was successful. Many times it wasn't. I remember my son. My son was involved in athletics in high school. And I told him, I said, okay, son, this is what they're looking for. This is what you want to do. And he followed what I said to a T. He did everything the right way. And more often than not, it did not work out for him by being a good guy and doing things the right way. But the thing about him is this. My son played chess better than any grown person that I ever saw. I saw the blood, sweat, and tears. I saw the pain. I saw the toil and the strife. But he had already figured out, I'm not going to play checkers. 
I'm going to play chess. I'm going to take these lemons and I'm going to make lemonade. And he told nobody of his plan. It wasn't until he and I were sitting down years later after he got out of high school, he told me his plan and why he did and reacted like he reacted. And I was stunned because for him to be as young as he was and to figure out, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this. I'm going to play chess with it so I can get what I want to get and what I need to get so I can advance the way I need to go. I mean, <laughs> it was really incredible what he did. And one thing that you got to remember too, you got to continually push the envelope to see what works. Yeah, you have your tried and true methods, but always be trying to grow. Always be trying to evolve. Always see if something else out there is going to enhance you, is going to enhance your ability to get to your goal or make it more efficient. So you want to play chess like that too. You just don't want to win, uh, learn one move. You want to learn three, four, five different ways that you can capture your opponent's king. So always be growing. Always be moving. So people, whatever you're doing, be it athletics, be it business, be it on your job, be it in school, stop playing checkers. Stop being reactive. Play chess. Play the chess game of life. Be proactive. Be a person that thinks four, five, six steps ahead. Be the type of person that controls the board. And you'll win this chess game of life. And you'll win it big. With that being said, I'm going to sign off. But you know what I always say to you. Yours in life, yours in business, and yours in success. You have a good night and remember, be great.